Hi there! Today we're going to look at how to build an APA research proposal. To get a better understanding of how the proposal should look, we need to break it down to the bare bones of a research study by looking ahead a little to what a finished study would look like. So let's start by looking at the major parts of a standard APA research document. First comes the title page. And if you need a little help with those headers, just take a look at our other tutorials on how to put those headers in Word or in Pages. Next comes the abstract. This is a short summary of your research or your proposal, and it should be no more than 250 words long. If this is for a class assignment, check with your professor. He might not require an abstract if the proposal is a short one or if he's doing a more mainstream research paper. Next comes the introduction. This usually includes the literature review, although some professors might want you to actually label the lit review with a separate heading. From the introduction, we move to the methods section, where you explain how the research is conducted. And if it is a finished study, you'll then move to the results section, followed by the discussion section. Finally, you'll list your references and any appendices, which could include copies of a survey or test you used, or other additional documents. Now we're talking about a proposal, so in this case, you won't have any results yet, and you'll have nothing for the discussion section, so you'll just skip those parts for, for this particular document. So how do we lay out all this information? The standard APA document starts with a title page on page 1. Then on page 2, you'll type your abstract. Only your abstract should appear on page 2, with the one exception, perhaps, of a list of keywords. Again, that could be up to your professor. On page 3, you'll start the body of your proposal and continue naturally from there, just like a regular essay. You don't need to put the new sections on a new page. Just use headings. When you're finished with the body of your proposal, you'll go to the top of the next page and start your references section. The best way to do that is to just add a page break at the end of the body section. When you're done with your references, then you'll again add another page break and go to the top of the next page and add your first appendix. Each additional appendix will start on a new page. Now that we know the lay of the land, let's look at some specifics. What information actually belongs in the introduction to start with? Well, first you need a clear statement of the problem. What exactly are you going to study? This is a little broader focus than your hypothesis will be later in the paper. Then we need to know the purpose of your study. What are you hoping to, to discover and what do you think you'll do with that information? Then you'll need to explain the significance of your study. Why is your study important? Here you might include some statistics to help you make your case. And yes, it's absolutely okay to start citing sources this early in your proposal. Then we get to the real meat of the introduction, the literature review. This is where you tell us what kind of research is already out there, and perhaps what's missing. The theoretical framework may actually derive from the literature you have reviewed, or it might be a more concrete focus based on what your professor has asked for. So, I mean, you might discuss the theory as you work through the literature review, or when you're done with the lit review, you might create a separate heading where you discuss the theory in more detail, and then lead into the next section, the research questions and hypothesis. Now note, usually the introduction does not have a heading, but again, check with your professor. Now let's take a look at the real meat of that introduction, the literature review. It can be a little overwhelming, so we're going to take a look at the main parts of this section. The purpose of the literature review is to show that you have explored the existing knowledge connected to your subject. So what do we already know? Who told us? When and how is it relevant to your research? These are questions that you should be answering with the literature that you have gathered. As you read through your research, consider these main points. First, what contribution does each article make to the body of knowledge that we already have on this topic? Look for comparisons between different studies and even more importantly, look for contradictions that you could address. The context might also be important, so consider when and where these studies were conducted and perhaps with what kinds of subjects or maybe what kinds of equipment, that sort of thing. Also look for the relevance to your research and be sure you address that. 
And then you can also look for gaps in the research. This is your chance to really shine. If you can find a gap that you can actually answer with your research, you'll find a very important place in that body of knowledge. Now remember the Lit Review is a narrative that describes what we already know about the topic. You don't want it to read like an outline or an annotated bibliography. You want it to flow narratively. And that kind of leads to the next question. How do we organize all that information? Well, there are really three decent ways to organize your literature review. The first and best way to organize things is by themes or topics. You'll probably notice as you're doing your research that there are certain themes or ideas that come up from article to article. And you might have three studies that address the same point. You can talk about those three articles in the same paragraph if you need to because they're centered around one particular theme and maybe the next couple of articles deal with another theme or another aspect of your topic. That's a really solid and, and good narrative way to organize your lit review. But if the method is an important factor, you could also organize your research that way. You might have three studies that used the same method but got different results. And then you had a couple other studies that used different methods that had a significant impact of the findings. The last approach is best for historical research where you want to show a progression or evolution in the phenomenon or the research. Then you can organize it chronologically. As you compose this part of your proposal, don't try to list every detail of each study. Skip the non-essential details. Tell us about the pertinent findings or maybe some issues with the methodology and the major conclusions, recommendations, or even limitations of some of these studies. So let's review. So far, You've made your clear statement of the problem, you have the purpose of the study and the significance of the study, and you've also finished your literature review. Now, if you have not covered the theoretical framework, here's your time to do that. You can break it out as a separate topic, but again, if you've already incorporated that into your lit review, you're, you're good to go. You might ask your professor what preference they have. And then you get to your research questions and your hypothesis. Now note that sometimes the hypothesis comes at the end of the introduction as we have it here, but it could also come at the beginning of the method section. So again, you're kind of paying attention to what your professor wants, or if you're writing for a potential journal, what does the journal usually look for? So now that we have the introduction complete, it's time to move on to the methods. This is the how of your proposal, so you want to include a lot of detail here. So let's start with the procedures. You definitely want to list the participants, maybe some characteristics, how, how you found them, the sampling method, that sort of thing. What kind of instruments you might be using, whether it's surveys or tests or other information. You could talk about the variables that you're looking at. You also want to make sure we know what research design you are using, qualitative or quantitative or quasi-experimental, that sort of thing. You may also include a projected materials needs list, so maybe what kind of equipment or personnel you'll need to conduct this study. Now, if you are working with human beings in any way, you must notify IRB, the Institutional Review Board. This is very important. If you're conducting a survey or an interview, a focus group, or some kind of experiment, you are technically interacting with human subjects. So that means you need to notify the IRB. And you might want to give that a little time because sometimes that can take a while. So let's get back to the main part of your method. Data collection would come in now. How are you going to collect the data and how will you evaluate that data? Make sure you explain that. You might also address reliability and validity issues. There might be a timetable set up. How are you going to conduct this experiment over what period of time, that sort of thing. And as you're winding this down, you may also talk about delimitations. This is where you talk about what the research will or won't do and why. You might also describe what the final product will be. 
you know, is it going to result in an article or a report of some kind or a presentation? How are you going to get that information out? And who will your audience be? And if it is involving human subjects, how are you going to protect the anonymity of the participants? So with a proposal, you'll have no results or discussion, but you still need to wrap things up and have a, a conclusion of some sorts. A good way to do this is to consider the implications of the work you are proposing. You might discuss the sources of potential bias, or maybe even the limitations of your instruments or the sample group you've chosen, or some other limitations. But most of all, you want to leave your audience with a strong sense of the potential contribution your study will make to the existing body of knowledge. So with the introduction and the methods out of the way, now you can party, right? Well, no, seriously, now you need to give credit to all the references you used in preparing your proposal. And if you plan to use existing or self-created instruments of some kind or have other documents to include, you will list them as appendices. So now you have all the basic pieces of the puzzle and you're ready to tackle a standard APA research proposal. Remember, your professor might have more specific requirements, but these are the basics. If you do have questions or need more help, please visit a Writing Realize lab and talk to a writing specialist early.